What's up, everyone? Thank you for joining us on Dream Big Daily's podcast, a podcast made by Dream Big & Co., a company in which I created. I'm the creator and founder, Anthony Dapolito III. But our goal is to focus on everyone else and tell their stories. And today, we have a really cool individual based in Texas, Kobe Wheeler. And this is episode 60, eclipsing that mark in a special way of our own. Kobe is a digital marketing specialist, a graphic designer, a designer, and a brand strategist. From having entrepreneurial and entrepreneurship DNA in his blood since a young age and starting his own businesses in his own way, he now has two legit incorporated agencies of his own. Uh, And at a young age and doing that, it's very profound and both fascinating. He's gone step by step from getting a gig in high school for a TEDx conference and designing uh, both of the logo for it, but also doing operational stuff. He's built his skill set since then. You know, he's he's figured it out as he went. He embodies what an entrepreneur is, and he has really cool creative skills with graphic design and design. So we get into that entire process, his journey leading up until now, things he's learned. But nonetheless, we have a story that is amazing, and I hope you enjoy So on this episode 60 of Dream Big Daily, a Dream Big & Co. podcast, enjoy Kobe Wheeler's story and let us know what you think. I have a dream. That's one small step for man. I am the greatest. You want something? Go get it. Period. But yeah, Kobe Wheeler here. Uh, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm super excited. Yeah, and I, I would love to have you. I love starting this way where per, pretend no one knows you. And basically, uh, people might not know you for the most part unless it's shared with the friends, family uh, network of yours. But nonetheless, can you explain to others who you are, what you do as of now? And uh, we'll backtrack from current stuff, top of mind I want to talk about, to uh, to your story as a younger kid. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, so so like you said, my name is Kobe Wheeler. Um, and so I am a college student, but also an entrepreneur, um, which is kind of a fun, unique situation. So I work in um, digital marketing and then also graphic design. Um, and I, I love that as we talked about kind of last time, Anthony, like it brings those two sides of my brain, like the analytical and the creative together. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so, yeah, I run two businesses in those spaces. Um, and over the last few months have started a transition from kind of like solopreneur over to like starting to like hire on some contractors. And that's been really exciting and new and interesting. And then also just like, shifting with the pandemic and um so yeah yeah and to that point then can you explain solopreneur but then a thing you've learned when making that shift because i'm sure it's more managerial like leading uh organizational behavior systems type stuff but i would love to get some insight into that because i've never heard of someone making that transition before yeah so solopreneur i mean for anybody that's like super new to entrepreneurship um solopreneur is basically when like you're running the whole entire show so like i was doing everything from bookkeeping to like all the client work client communication lead prospecting all of that like from start to finish and everything after and before like that if it's i was doing all of it if it's not already hard enough you got you got all the hats on (laughs) <laughs> totally totally so right i'm like in quickbooks like doing that stuff sending like uh, invoices all, like all of it and it, it's crazy right but um right now i mean it got to the point where like when the when the pandemic first started i basically lost all my clients like had nothing um which i mean i'm in school so like right i have savings and things that i could have could could survive off of but it's it's not me i'm like a total workaholic um and and so i ended up finding you know everything kind of fell into place and i found some new leads which was awesome um but now i've gotten to the point where it's like I, i had got out so many leads got out so many um 
quotes. And so now I have a ton of clients and, and as we've talked about before, like kind of client dumping of all these tasks on, onto me that I'm like, I don't have time for all of this. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, I, I put out kind of an all call. I, I personally like to hire on, there's just a philosophy that I've had, especially from like when I was younger, when I was in high school or earlier in college, even like people took chances on me. And so I kind of want to, pay that forward i guess is the right way to put it um yeah. and so i put a call out to to some other university students younger university students here at ut dallas um and found uh one one gal in particular that I, I i really thought she had a lot of potential like her portfolio was really um really slim like had maybe three different things in there one of which was her own logo but like I saw the potential and I mean, I think to your point of, of the managerial side of things, like that's something that I expected, but not to the extent that I, I guess, first intended or first thought about because it, it really is like, you have to figure out your managing style and like, you're just doing all of that on the fly. It's not like you're like, yeah. Oh, let's go through these scenarios. Like, um, so, I mean, she sent me, I, I gave her a really simple, like, social media project. I get some graphics put together. And what she sent me back, I was, like, not super impressed with. But then gave her some resources to, to, I was like, here's some things you can tweak. You know, here's some feedback. Here's some resources. Here's some, like, applications you might play around with for this kind of stuff. And within 24 hours, like, sent me back an entirely new social media calendar that, like, I was super impressed with and like wasn't even like it was above the standards that I would set for myself. And so I think that's such an important lesson, like for people that might be considering going through that phase of like going from solopreneur to hiring people on is like, be willing to put in the work to give people the feed, like the valuable feedback, even if it's like, uh, I'm really annoyed. I don't want to write this like five paragraph email with all these resources. It's like, th those are second, might be second nature to you, mm. but for somebody that's new to the game, like giving them those resources can, can make a world of difference. That's actually big. Cause that time you put into basically training and teaching, um, used to go into you doing it yourself. Exactly. So it's like the, uh, modulation of that. That's a really good point actually. And then, yeah, yeah, you can go. Yeah. No, I was just, I mean, uh, yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, it's, it's, it's very much a shift in like where you're spending your time. You're going from the person doing the work to the person doing the managing. And that's just like such a new experience for me, but it's, it's kind of exciting because it's new. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And, and when you are the uh, like team player, when you have a bigger company or you build something that you want to scale, et cetera, delegation, they always say is the, the key pillar for all of that. So it's sort of, that's the new skill you're learning, uh, a part of your journey. But along with that, as you're delegating, uh, you also, I'm guessing are managing clients, but your, your boots are probably on the ground a little bit with clients. How do you set, since you're in the graphic design, digital, specialist uh, space how do you set boundaries for service systems and just services in general because it can get really tough when you hire someone contracted or you don't eliminate expectations in the beginning they can be taken advantage of so so what have you found either failed through or learned from successfully in, in your new phase yeah i mean that's definitely a challenge right i think setting expectations especially in graphic design can be really hard um and so i mean for me i've kind of come up with a system that i that i know works for most clients um which includes like a certain number of like major revisions a certain number of smaller revisions right and there's like definitions for those things that i give them um because here's what I learned when I was like the new kid on the block in, in, in graphic designing for clients and doing logos and things, I was being underpaid because I was letting myself be underpaid. Like I was quoting people at a ridiculously low price and then 
was letting them drag me on for forever right like because yeah, when you because when I, something's I, free or that when something's priced at that like uh the bar is set where it is so people can they just go based on that it's not anything else people aren't like naturally like malice they're not going to just treat you wrong totally no and it's it's right like that's how they understood the process to work and that was how i set up the process right <laughs> it was like there was you could do unlimited revisions and you could do this or that or whatever and right they would get dragged on for three months and it was a waste of everybody's time because they weren't getting what they wanted and i was like probably getting paid like two dollars an hour or whatever like in in the end of it so i mean i think that comes with experience right i mean uh, i was originally in the camp of like just get paid hourly um and i've changed that position back and forth many many times i i have feelings on that that go continually flip-flop um but I think it comes with experience, right? It comes with understanding how valuable your time is. I've really like, that's something that was a goal within the last year was like not to sell myself short, not not to um, just try and get the client. Like I, I wanted to make sure that like, I understood that my time was valuable. And even if I'm not getting that client, that's okay, right? Like you have to egg that game on for, for longer and go through a few different leads to get to the client that, that believes in your work. Exactly. Um, but I, I mean, as far as, as systems and things, you know, that's something that I'm still learning more about that I'm still kind of, as I start to contract more people, mm -hmm. um, certainly one of the things that's kind of unique is that I think I, I run into less of those problems because I'm working with people that are college students that are younger, like this might be their first time contracting. Mm -hmm. That allows me to set the expectations in a way that is fair for both because I've been in that situation. I'm not trying to screw anybody over. That's not my goal. Right. Um, but I think when you work with people or, or agencies, right, if you contract out to another agency, oftentimes your work is going to get overlooked. Your work is going to get kind of thrown into the, the, yeah, exactly. Know, like the, not the bucket yeah the bucket of other things that has to be done mm -hmm. um and so when you contract with like individual people like that that like they're building their skill set i think you get a really unique experience in that you're able to kind of direct them a little better um and not be confined into like what this like big companies or this agency's like workflow is um mm -hmm. which i really enjoy so that's kind of a unique like pro to what i'm doing versus what i think a lot of people do mm -hmm. yeah you, you're uh you're not forcing it you're where you are and you're utilizing certain things within your scope right now i think on uh episode 56 like one past episode we just did uh this guy eric talked about a lot of people like go they try to do things in, in the way they want to be and it's good to strive to who you want to become but they let the opportunities in front of them go unrecognized and in the, the boats pass. So I think it's nice for you to um, kind of humble yourself and see like, I'm going to use what I have and uh, do it in a good way too, which is, it's really nice. Totally. And I, the one thing I got from you before too, was that um, you, ha you had to learn your way to your hourly rate or whatever it is. But I think that's such an unlock when you start to see your time in your hours as X dollars per hour. It might be a very like robotic thing to, to some, but if, if a friend said, yo, let's meet up and talk for an hour, like they're taking $50 from you, you know, recognize that. Absolutely. I mean, that is something that I think I, I have recognized over the, uh, probably the last 12 to 18 months, maybe. Um, is like, I, I'll actually translate that to something different, right? I'll translate that to, I, I'm a, a coffee connoisseur. I love coffee. <laughs> and so when I go and get a coffee, right, I'm like, all right, I'm going to go to the, the st Starbucks or will I go to the, the local place down the street, right? Maybe it's a dollar more to go to the local place, but it's like, I'm supporting small business, but in terms of like my time, right. I'm like, okay, that like me buying this coffee costs me 10 minutes of work. 
Like that's, I, I think about it that way, mm. which, which I think some people take to an unhealthy obsession, but I also think it's very valid to be like aware of uh, is kind of tacky as this sounds like time equals money, you know? Yeah, no, no, you're, it's, I, I'm finding that the more you uh, strip things to their core and like really see stuff as the, as the way it is, the more you, the more you see reality, uh, the more present you can become and the more tactical things can be. But like you said, not in a extremist manner, like yeah. but things are good in moderation and balance for sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So for you, you're up until the point now where you have your, you have two companies, your own agency too. Um, what led you to that point, even prior to what we talked about was trying to get your own rates, like what led you to really wanting to do graphic design? Because and working our way backwards, uh, connecting the dots is always interesting to me. So to that point, I'm really curious. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll start in high school because that's where like, I think my obsession with graphic design started to come in. Um, uh, in high school, uh, I was a part of a, a TEDx, like TED Talks, right? But but TED, the X equals like independently organized event. Um, and so in high school, alongside my English teacher, we kind of like started, not kind of, we did start a TEDx conference uh, within the school. Um, and it was a part of the curriculum in, in freshman English. And then I, I volunteered as, as that executive producer. Uh, a student executive producer for for uh, my sophomore and my junior year as well. And so we had to like come up with the TEDx logo, both for like the actual TED like X logo and also like our themes. We had to do posters. We had to do flyers. We had to do uh, a Facebook event, like yeah, yeah. graphics overlay there was so many things and it's like nobody knew how to do it nobody <laughs> knew and i was like okay i'll figure it out right like i had taken a, a like a really basic like illustrator course in maybe like my eighth grade year um it's so like end of middle school and so i started just going into photoshop and like going crazy and like figuring it out and it would take right like a poster would take me probably like 10 hours it took me a ridiculous amount of time. What would take me an hour now took me 10 hours then, right? Yeah. And that relates back to like how much my rate is, right? That kind of thing. But uh, I mean, I love doing it. I loved being creative. I loved learning about it. Even though like some of those first posters were rough. Like they were rough. Um, <laughs> but, but I learned by doing. I learned by doing. I did it. I, I figured it out. Did it take me a long time? Absolutely. Are there shortcuts for things that I didn't figure out until three years later? Yeah, would they have saved me a lot of time back then? Of course. Um, but yeah, I mean, I learned by doing. And I mean, the, the thing that I think struck me is like, I wasn't smart enough at the time, or maybe I was too prideful, I don't know. But to like go and look at like videos, like sit down and actually like learn like YouTube, like how to do Photoshop or whatever it would be, right? I mean, I quite literally Googled like whatever it was I needed to do in the moment, but I wasn't willing to sit down and really like learn, learn. Um, and I don't know. I still kind of carry that philosophy with me of like, I can Google anything. Um, and I know we talked about that the last time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but um, I mean, yeah, like I just, I Googled it. Like how do you yeah. resize an image or whatever? Especially um, any creative pursuit. It's always by doing that you start it's like the action cures all type mentality and um especially in the, in the day and age we're in it's important for both uh depth work to be utilized but then a skill to be developed like yeah especially in the creative realm or anything with specific knowledge uh that's the way in which you enter so it's nice to hear that humanness of i literally sucked at my first poster and then just now I'm at where I'm at. So it's, it's literally consistency and patience and progress through that. But I did see your TEDx logo that you made. And it, it was, uh, what is the, the human? Uh, the Vitruvian man. Yeah, yeah. That was, that, yeah. Was, that was a good idea. How did you, 
come to conceptualize that in and of itself like uh, basically what i'm asking when you do design in general not even just then what is your process through thinking how to design something visually mm. yeah i mean that's a tough one right like that's like because i think the creative process for me is like a little second nature but uh, mm. f- from then to now right now i do more corporate design logo stuff that process is a little different whereas i think when i I look at some of the stuff that i did for tedx right conceptualizing some of those things that's more creative um and i think whereas the the logo design part comes into being more like pulling information from a client Mm -hmm. um so those processes look a little bit different as far as the creative side i mean we had come up with the theme which was on being human and you know, I just kind of like started like it was over the summer before we even got into school, and I was like, okay, what can we do? Like, what is like the essence of a human, right? And I mean, uh, TEDx talks, TEDx themes are very vague on being human. You can do a lot of things like that, <laughs> yeah. but so I was like, okay, like let's look at it like in its simplest form. Like, what is a human being? And you go to the Vitruvian Man. Like, that's the that's the thing that people look for. Um, and then we just kind of stylized it. I mean, I, that final logo is, is something that I conceptualized and then our, our team actually ended up finalizing it into a little bit more modern style. Um, but I mean, I was, I, I really like this idea of like, okay, you've got the, the Vitruvian man and right. It's like a perfect circle. And then like, but you've also got these four limbs that like make an X for Ted X. Like it, it just made sense in my brain. And so to put all of that together, um, yeah. I just, I loved the idea, and so we rolled with it, um, and it ended up being really cool. Maybe I'll send you some photos that you can like overlay on this, but yeah, yeah. Um, of of we actually ended up painting this huge like I want to say it was probably like four feet or six feet by six feet panel, and actually hanging that logo like from the stage. Um, mm. But yeah, that was a super fun. That's, That's like cool. probably one of my favorite works. Yeah, for sure. It's probably cool to see something come to fruition like that. I love doing things that uh, my favorite part of graphic design is when I'm not doing something that's graphic design. I like doing things that are physical design. I mean, I've designed product packaging and like, yeah, that gives me more of a rush because I think like we live in such a like digital age that like anything that's on a screen, right. I think a lot of people know like Photoshop or they go to, to like Adobe spark post or uh, Canva, right. Anybody can make something that's going to go on a screen, but when we get into things like I've designed coffee bags, I, I designed um, one of my really like most unique projects is like a logo that ended up going on a catamaran in the Bahamas. Like there's wow. just like, yeah. I love doing those things. It's like, it's something that's physical. Like it's going to get printed. It's going to be like a 3d thing or whatever it is. Like those are the things that I think I enjoy the most because it's, it's so unique. It's a very unique experience to see like something that you've designed in physical form. Um, rather okay. than and it, it also, it also pressures you in a way because you know, it has to be solid because that's going to be on. <laughs> Cause it lasts forever, right? Like uh, th- that, that <laughs> ship is going to be sailing for however many years <laughs> that, that coffee bag that I designed is going to be on the shelves for however many years. Yeah. And the, like those projects were some of the hardest projects I've ever done for sure. Like those two, the, the, the catamaran one and the coffee bag, like those took, well, actually it, the catamaran one only took a few weeks, but because they needed it in a few weeks, they were like, we're going to the Bahamas in two weeks. It has to be printed because we're not coming back to port for like three months. So we scrambled it. We got it done. But but the coffee one for sure. I mean, it took, I think I worked on that for a year before it was finalized. Wow. 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 But yeah. Yeah. That, that I think to the, the first point it, uh, in the first example, as I, get into learning flow more and more that the constraints are in the challenges are you need a little spice of that in order to really get you in that creative creative flow experience mm-hmm. if you don't it's not pushing your bounds at all yeah yeah but then with the one year design is that like is that extremely difficult to to have to be that patient in producing something and, and why did it take that long a hundred percent. It's, 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 it is actually frustrating. Uh, the, the, 
that specific project took a really long time. Um, and this was actually one of the projects that I learned from as far as like my creative process, because this was something that I worked on about eh, two years ago, maybe two and a half years ago. Um, it taught me a lot about how to structure my creative process towards my clients because that's one of the ones where i was working at an hourly rate i was underselling myself um and i had no limits i had no limits at all on um what the process looked like and i i didn't know what i was doing is it maybe a harsh term but definitely from the creative process to a client like that that creative to client kind of relationship was really rough um and so we went through i think we went through like 40 iterations wow a lot um a lot and and so i i ended up severing that client relationship once we finished the bag i wanted to finish the actual product um and then let them find somebody else for kind of the continued thing because we built the brand from the ground up they didn't have anything to start with um and so i mean i was doing logo design product design uh website design like i was doing all of it mm -hmm. but we were chain like we didn't finalize the logo and then move on to the website or move on to the bag and then the website like we were doing all of that simultaneously and so that's why it took so long because i didn't know what i was doing i wasn't i wasn't telling the client we should finish this part first and really finalize this so we went through like maybe 10 iterations of the logo but simultaneously we were doing the bag so the the bag would change to the logo the logo would change to the bag like it was back and forth yeah, yeah, it was exactly ridiculous. exactly um so but that taught me so 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 much about like how my brain works and how i like to work with clients and, and i think like quote unquote how it should be done um because yeah it was it was mm -hmm. a nightmare of a year because i was like i'm i i eventually came to realize after a few months i was being underpaid and there's no way out of it like i was in a contract for them until that was yeah. finished um so so that was a huge lesson for me yeah and one thing i've learned in as we released our new website this thing of preparation is so important and <laughs> so key we, we we often think that things can be done quicker than uh in our imagination but in reality it's it's much more arduous at times but uh that preparation allows like we said the back to one of the themes this reality to set in but also to set like actionable steps um one thing to be dreaming big but also another to like be able to get to that level through action items and pragmatism yeah. yeah i mean i think that goes back to what i was talking about with like my creative process versus like my client to creative process is like if i'm designing something that's for me or that's for fun or that's for art or that's for my personal portfolio yeah i can go into photoshop and i can I can mess around with it for as long as I want. And I, like, I have that vision in my head, right? But when you're working with a client, it's a very different relationship. You are kind of a, I guess a Sherpa is like a great word for that. Like you're kind of guiding the client through that creative process. And you have to be very clear and understand like what you need from them and plan that out and give them an idea of what that looks like, or else it's going to crash in the end. Yeah, for sure. And in this year, there's been uh many second takes box agility uh that has to set in but what are you what is something you've uh and i th and i think i asked you this on our conversation before but what's something you've changed your perception on based on this year that you'll use forever going forward and then the year ahead because i'm sure you have plans which we'll get into which i would like to talk about uh both with your agency with yourself personally but something you've really that's altered your way of viewing the world or doing work uh because yeah. you've been you know brought down to your uh brought down to the ground uh, everyone has. yeah yeah i mean the answer i gave you last time which i'm gonna give you again because it, it's i've actually been thinking about it a lot even in the last kind of week since we talked was um at first when the pandemic hit i was super excited to work from home set my own schedule i mean i was already doing that to some extent um especially as just like a creative professional and having kind of clients all across texas and and one or two obviously out of out of state out of the country even um but 
there, there was, there's one client that I have. It's about a 30 minute drive away from my house. Uh, I have a home office, as you can see, um, <laughs> to their, to their offices. And I would go in once a week, um, because it was a pretty, I mean, they, I, I do a lot of stuff for them. I'm basically their, their full-time digital marketing person. And I was driving up towards their office for, I was getting an old laptop looked at and I was driving up kind of the same direction had my music on right and I was just kind of like thinking about like wow I actually really miss going into the office like I really miss talking to people in person about business stuff right like I talk to my friends sometimes I I, I live on campus somewhere where like um we've kind of got this little bubble of people and so I've got a few friends that live on campus that we see each other every once in a blue moon but I think there's such a unique energy to like being in the room especially for creatives um and then also yeah. just like being able to like take a drive and like listen to music and like just have like some downtime that I haven't had in a long time was so nice. So I, I think going into next year forward, whatever, when, whenever the pandemic is quote unquote over, right. It's technically never going to be over because we'll always have coronavirus circulating in some capacity, but um, I think I'll definitely take uh, that, that from this is like For savoring sure. those moments, even when it's like, Oh, we're doing work. Right. I actually really enjoy my work, so I can't <laughs> say that. But um, I, I think just like enjoying being in the room and, and being able to bounce ideas off of people, not in a virtual setting, but face to face. Yeah, that, that sense of it's cool that that brought you a sense of gratitude and uh, knowing to not let that go miss next time around. But it's so funny totally. to bring that up because multiple times on LinkedIn today, um, especially with the CEO of Complex, um, complex great media company he said like i he just said straight up i, I miss going into the office and seeing people's creative energy and output because there's such sparks that fly when you do that so i definitely resonate. Yeah. yeah i mean there's conversations you just can't have over email there's conversations you just can't have in a zoom meeting right like there's that like you can't get that like kind of like talking over of each other. You get really excited about something. Uh -huh. There's just not the same energy on a Zoom call as there is is in the office. So yeah, I, that's that's what I'm gonna miss for sure for the next however long we're we're in this thing. Yeah, and then going forward, um, what is what is a bigger dream you have just in life, in general, and something you are excited to aspire to become or to achieve in some capacity? Yeah, I mean, you know, whether I've had this professionally or personally, whether it be professionally or personally too, like you can be either or or both. Yeah, I think I think it's both actually. I think it's really actually interlinked is like um for me being in school and also doing entrepreneurship or doing entrepreneurship that sounds so <laughs> so daunting. Um but but being an entrepreneur and being in college, there's a better way to put it. Um it makes me choose between what I'm spending my time on. And so I think for me, like the bigger goal, the bigger picture is like having the opportunity to be a full-time entrepreneur as tacky as that sounds. I think that actually sounds really tacky, but like being a full-time entrepreneur, being able to put my full self into, into both of my businesses, my agencies and having the opportunity to like, do that full time and like grow that and hire more people on like being able to employ people being able to like find more leads um have more clients like do bigger projects i mean i really i love i love being an entrepreneur i've been an entrepreneur since i literally since i could speak i know we talked about that in my in, in our last call but um just just growing that even more and being able to spend full time on it is is definitely a dream of mine it's something i've grappled with a little bit because like my path is certainly not the cookie cutter like let's go get an internship at amazon or facebook or whatever right like an agency in town mm -hmm. I, i've been working and and had clients basically since i was like a senior in high school and so i, I struggle constantly with like the should I go into corporate work? Should I go and find like that corporate job straight out of college? And like more and more, I realize the answer is no. Like, that's not for me. That's not what I've done my entire life. Like besides going to college, I don't think my path has been super cookie cutter. Um, and even in that, like my major is, is 
the only program in the world like that i'm in like this is the only program that's out there um so it's just like it's fascinating i don't think the corporate world is for me and so yeah being able to to grow my business is definitely the 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 long-term goal that i'm super excited about yeah to to be able to juggle the other things uh, along with the businesses it's uh and and grow in the way you have it'll be really cool to see what happens when you got your full energy on just the businesses and i find it the one connection i i just made too it's so fascinating that you've been this entrepreneurial kid and entrepreneur since you were young and around that time you were probably focusing on it a lot in like some intentional or unintentional way it just was you and i always say as you get older you want to become like your younger self basically or someone your younger self would appreciate so it's cool to see you know that path into you're just going back to what you always did yeah for sure i mean like we talked about my last uh in our last call together like when i was a kid like i was I, we'd have these neighborhood garage sales and i was begging my parents to like go to Krispy Kreme at <laughs> five in the morning so we could sell donuts and then i would use that money uh to go and buy things from the garage sale and flip them at our own garage sale. Like I would try and go find things that I thought I could sell and bring them back and like upsell them, like price them higher uh, at our own garage sale. So, I mean, yeah, like that was just like, that was like fun for me. That was like, I enjoyed doing that. And so uh, and let me you're ask, totally right. Why, why did you enjoy doing that? Was it like, what detail within that made it cool to you? it was the entrepreneur in me. I don't know how to explain it other than that. Like I was just such an entrepreneur at birth. I really was like, I, I mean, my, my dad was an entrepreneur at the time, um, which certainly explains probably a lot of that. I was around that. He was working from home. Um, and I just, I don't know. I don't know yeah. that it was necessarily, I wanted to follow in his footsteps. Like I don't really have that like kind of sentimentality to it, but it certainly was just like, it, I think it was an exciting thing to be making kind of money on my own terms as a kid. Um, Cause like I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm an eight year old, like I'm not going to get a job. Right. <laughs> like, like that was the one way that I could make money. And I think I like talking to people and just like, I don't know. I found that really it's fun good. and I still find that really fun today. Right. Like I love talking to people and understanding their solutions and, or understanding what they need to, to find a solution to their problem. Um, and sharing knowledge and like yeah. certainly that has developed from selling donuts like what knowledge do I have about donuts nothing but I was certainly selling then and like I'm still selling now but it's just design and 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 digital marketing rather than than donuts so yeah that's so cool that's uh that's so full circle I uh, appreciate you sharing all that and uh if there was anything because I like to leave the door open at the end if there's anything you would like to mention that's top of mind or a bigger realization you've had, I would love for you to share that. But nonetheless, there was such, such a uh, gems and it was cool to see more of the, the intricacies of your journey t until now. For sure. Um, I think one thing we talked about last time that I think is a good nugget of information to end with um, is that we live in the, the internet age you can i mean we talked we touched on this a little bit but like you can google anything i learned everything that i've learned as far as digital marketing does and, and design goes from the internet i've googled it all right like i've i've gotten certified for google ads by googling google ad certifications there's free certifications out there for people um the one little anecdote is is i actually matched with somebody on bumble we talked about this last time too but they were like Oh, you, they, they had figured out, I guess if it was through my Instagram or maybe I have it in my, my profile, but they had basically been like, Oh, you have your business. I want to start a business. And then like rattled off like a bunch of questions of like, how do you start a business? What, like, where do you go? How do you file? Like all this stuff. And, and it's funny because I didn't have anybody to guide me through that when I was doing it and starting my businesses. Like I quite literally Googled, like, how do you file for a business in Texas and went from there? It's not, it's not incredibly hard, but I think, I think sometimes people often overlook that like we have the knowledge at our fingertips. You can, you can quite literally Google anything, whatever it is you want to learn. There, there are certainly 
there are probably free courses out there or free YouTube videos or free web pages out there for it. If not, I mean, there might be some paid ones, but I mean, Google offers free certifications. Facebook has free classes. The certifications cost a little bit as far as their digital marketing stuff goes. I mean, there you can learn so many yeah, things by just Googling. Yeah, just Google it. Just, uh, just Google it. Alexa. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no matter what advancements are made and what changes happen within society, there will always be those same concepts of like, the knowledge can be there or it can't, but the application of it is everything. And it's just fascinating. It, yeah. It's, I yeah. like a good, good golden nugget to end with, but, uh, <laughs> and what, what, uh, platform do you use the most or maybe it just your website too? Where do you want people to keep up to date with your stuff or even if they need your help? Content? Oh man. Um, I mean, Instagram is always a, a good little thing. I mean, I've been off, off of it more. I'm like a real sucker for TikTok lately. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but if you, if you want to reach out to me, you can certainly do that um, on my Instagram. It's at Kobe Wheeler, K-O-B-Y. Um, and then also you can visit me at kobewheeler.com. Um, and I have a contact me button and, and you can pretty much direct email me from there. But yeah, if anybody wants advice, needs like some links to some certifications or has questions more about like how I got to where I am, um, I, I love sharing knowledge and helping people out. So open book. I'll uh, make sure to attach all those links, but awesome. much appreciated. Thank you for joining. You're so welcome. Thanks for having me.